Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rohan Kandelwal, your marrow surgery faculty, and it's a great honor to be introducing Dr. Divya to all of you. She secured rank eight in the recently conducted NEET PG exam. How does it feel, Dr. So Divya? Uh, the result came out last evening. Has it uh, sunk in that you've got this amazing rank? Yeah, still it's going on, sir. How many times yes, did you take the result? Yesterday, more than 10 times. <laughs> All right. And were you expecting such a good rank? Like from the recalls that I checked, I was getting around 690s to 700. But like I expected mm -hmm. a lot of inflation compared to the last year's ranks. So the score is around the same, but rank definitely no. I expected somewhere 400 to 500 rank. Not so a this was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Does your, the choice of subject change with this rank coming in, or it still remains the same what it was if you would have got a 400 rank? I mean, all maybe almost the same, because I've always had dermatology, pediatrics, and internal medicine as my options. Right. So more or less the same. Great. That's great. So Dr. Divya, you're from Bangalore Medical College. This was your first attempt with internship. You told me that your internship got over in uh, April. Uh, when did you really become serious about net need PG preparation? Like at the beginning of internship, uh, in fact, during my internship, the first four months, I had all of the simpler subjects like community medicine and all of the electives. And towards the fag end, things like medicine, OBG, and surgery. Uh, so I was like, so let me do what I can. And I just made sure that I'm like consistent and did like something every day, like at least one module, even on the busiest day, so that I stay in touch with the subject. And depending on the time I get, because we didn't know the exam dates back then. So depending on the right. time I'd get after completion of internship, so I'll know how where I've reached and like what more to be done. Fair enough. So basically, uh, the preparation started during internship. And um, when did marrow become part of your journey? So I took marrow sometime around March, April last year. So I've been using marrow since then. And what kind of a student were you in college? Um, were you always amongst the toppers, top, top three, top 10? What kind of a student were you going into internship? Yeah, I have always been consistent with my studies like throughout from second year. Mm -hmm. So you were amongst the toppers in your college? Yes. Perfect. All right. So you were carrying a good base into your internship and internship is when you decided to become serious about your NEPG preparation. And like you said, you didn't want to waste any day. You wanted to study every day, something or the other. And then gradually the momentum picked up as uh, the internship progressed. Yes, sir, right. I mean, there was a lot of ups and downs with a lot of breaks, like labor room postings and all the whole month. I haven't touched any book at all. So a okay. lot of pauses were there, but I tried my best. So look, ups and downs, I think so are a part of uh, all journeys, any preparatory journey will have ups and downs. But yes. let's, we have to put things into perspective. When would you call a, a week a good productive week in terms of study? What would that week look like during internship? So like, actually, I never measured productivity in terms of the whole week. Or in fact, I just took one day at a time and focused sure. on that day realizing i mean depending on when i return because everything was available in internship so nothing was constant when i left my home when i came back nothing was constant so everything was a variable day-to-day -day variability was there so i Fair just enough. focused on that day and moved ahead to the next day okay so let's go over one day how would one day let's say it's a moderate intensity posting because the reason why i'm asking this is a lot of students would be preparing with internship and it's yes, great uh, for them to hear this story 
because it gives them a lot of confidence that it is possible with internship. So let's say it's a moderate Absolutely. intensity of posting which you have. What would and you say supposing come back home by four o'clock? What would the day be then? Yes, sir. So actually, the earliest I come back home will be somewhere around five thirty six. Okay. So fair enough. So then it like if I'm like really motivated and. Yes, I can do it. I actually read some stuff like theory. If mm -hmm. I'm like somewhat okay, okay-ish, I would go on to question bank. And sometimes after solving the question bank, you get your little more motivation to go ahead and then switch back to theory. So it is. It was a jumbling show. Fair enough. Now, um, you said Q bank and you said questions. Were you solving questions every single day of your internship? Mm, I'm not I talking about say, the number. I'm just saying, were you doing questions on a daily basis? Yes, at least a few. Fair enough. And and the reason why I'm asking this is that the most common reason what I've seen why students don't get a rank is because they don't do enough MCQs. And it's qu yeah. quite ironic that it's an MCQ exam, but they don't practice enough MCQs. So number aside, if you do MCQs every day, it just puts you in a good frame of mind. So, which is why I wanted to ask that. Uh, let's talk about the Marrow Q Bank. What was your strategy with regards to the Q Bank? Were you doing questions immediately after reading a topic, or were you waiting a few days and then attempting the Q Bank for that topic? No, sir. In fact, I my plan was whatever department I'm in during internship, so yeah. I would be familiar to what hap what is happening in there in that subject. So I would go come back and solve the Q banks of that particular subject. Some places I could complete it that way, some places not. So okay. And were you using the Q bank as a learning tool or purely as an assessment tool and then reading the relevant theory after that which you said initially? No, sir, it was always a learning tool. So I would just choose a particular module and I would go on solving the questions. And I definitely made it a point to read the entire explanation. First, I would attempt an active recall of that particular topic and then would go ahead with reading what's underneath it so that filling up the gaps in my understanding and also adding up to my understanding. Did you have a target in mind that this is the number of questions I should get correct when I'm doing a module? Or um, I mean, were you chasing a number? Or was it just uh, gathering more information? Uh, it was more or less gathering information, but I would definitely be happy if I scored about 75% of questions right in the module. Fair enough. I mean, and that's a very standard thing to do. More than 70 to 75 is a good benchmark to have. And it definitely gives you confidence and tells you that you know the concept of that uh, topic. Uh, did you attend custom modules as well, uh, Dr. Divya? Yes, sir. Any particular, when... yeah, any particular tips and tricks for uh, students who are preparing for the NEET PG exam? regarding how to make custom modules? Yes, sir. Initially, we could start off with like all, all tags included with uh, all the subjects and uh, including previous year questions, non-previous year questions, and with all difficulty. But as you progress, you can, like very close to the exam, you can narrow it down to the previous year questions previous AMs, previous need PG tags. So that will give you an added advantage. And if you are someone who's doing like subject wise, you can do that subject. I wouldn't recommend doing it like immediately because it could lead to some bias. So at least like read your subject, give a gap of about two to three days and then do that particular subjects custom module or the clue bank modules. Fair enough. When did GTs come into the picture for you? Around the same time, sir, April, May 2024. 
and how frequent were you with the gts initially throughout internship it was like around once a month or once in one and a half months but over time like after internship ended and all i tried once in 15 days then it came down to once in 7 to 10 days mm. so um we can see a gt graph and we can see that there was a dip in between so um how uh, or if was there a time when your you know your performance plateaued and what did you do to overcome that uh, phase yes sir somewhere so initially during internship and all it was almost uh, around 140s 135 plus to 145 ish and also i realized like whenever there was a break like one month no studies at all like as happened during labor room postings or like during graduation time there was a dip and i realized that that was because of the recall type of questions which were like going bad so once i came back into the proper studying pattern so it gradually improved so there was a plateau of between 140 to 150 for like i think 6 to 8 weeks then after which i started improving on the minor subjects and started putting in time because you had rarely give that much time to those subjects in your professional years so that is when right. i feel it started improving so your analysis of your gts was that the final year sub the the minor subjects were bringing you down and once you started focusing on them your gt scores improved yes sir so uh, what dr divya is trying to say is that please use the gt as an analysis tool to identify which are your weak subjects or which are bringing you down and then work on them to improve your score if you are plateauing uh, dr divya what was the uh, lowest phase or the toughest phase during this entire preparatory journey i think the toughest period was during the major postings in internship because i was finding it hard to keep up the momentum like coming back and doing it every day was like really tough but i told myself if not two modules at least one module or at least a few questions as custom module so i think that has helped yeah so consistency i think so what you're trying to highlight is that even if it was a tough day but doing some bit of questions just being consistent um i i really like the statement which you made right at the beginning that you said that you wanted to do something at least every day and that makes a huge difference that something amounts to a, a lot of things over a period of one year yes sir so would you say that that was your strongest habit as well being consistent yes sir perfect um did you appear for the national mock which maru had conducted Yes, sir. I had a peer. What was your rank there? I, if I'm correct, somewhere around five hundred, six hundred, sir. What was your thought when you saw that rank? Did you think that you're on the right track, or did you tweak something once you saw that rank in your preparation or so in your revision? It's like GT analysis over the time it. did show either constancy or like slight improvement so mm-hmm. i believe that i was on the right track and i just identified what was the errors that i was making whether it was some topic that i didn't know at all or was it a recall problem or was it a conceptual problem and so once you identify those and like improve on those areas naturally it would be fine okay uh dr divya i find a lot of students they are clueless in the last one month leading up to the exam or the last 15 days last 10 days what to do so what ex- exactly did you do in the last one month last 15 days last 5 days leading up to the exam what did you read so last one month was like i just continued my uh, revision i had made a plan so that i will revise the major subjects in like Two days, the minor ones, and like, like two minor subjects in a day. So that was going on. 
since the last like one and a half months. So the last 15 days, again, I made sure that along with my revising of the subjects, I do the PYQs. So I covered all of the PYQs again in the last 15 days. And so that the was last using the custom modules with a PYQ tag. The no, with the previous year questions module. Previous year questions. Not with Correct. the custom. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So that way, I would be covering all of the subjects too in the last 15 days, which wouldn't be possible just with a revision. And I would be focusing on the important things, which are likely to have the maximum weightage in any exam. Mm -hmm. And, and the last not... five things, whatever the previous year questions that were remaining, plus some additional points that I had jotted down from my grant tests, or like a very difficult question from my uh, question, question bank while solving them. So I had a wrong book. So I did go through that in the last five days. Great. So by that, you could get a visual impression of all the 19 subjects in the last 10, 12 days, and that gave you confidence leading up to the exam. Yes, sir. Perfect. And um, I was told that you were a night owl. You used to study at night. What changes did you make in the last 10 days leading up to the exam? Because the exam was supposed to be during the daytime. Did you alter your schedule also so that you were prepared for the exam? Sir, night owl as such, I was going to bed around 12-ish and waking up around 7-ish. So okay. I had to just alter it by like half an hour, one hour to be at the exam center. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, looking at your rank, I, I'm sure you're pretty satisfied. Your parents are pretty satisfied. But um, was if you would have started earlier, earlier than your internship, say maybe in final year you became serious about NEET PG, would you have done something different? And what would be three tips which you would give to somebody who's say in final year right now and wants to target NEET PG in a couple of years time? So I did start solving question like grant tests and all in internship, but like I have been good with my standard books like right from second year. So the earlier you start, the better. But always start from today. Like today is your best day to start if you haven't already started. So yeah. somewhere in the final year, I started giving my GTs some beginning of internship. So I would think somewhere mid final year, you could start giving your GTs because you will have an idea of all of the 19 subjects. Because earlier than that, I don't know if you have covered all of the 19 subjects, maybe you can give it an attempt, but without having any idea of a subject, it wouldn't be fair on you also or on the marks that you get or on your future analysis of that test. So I would advise somewhere mid final year and I would advise them that entrance exam is not an entirely separate entity from your MBBS course. So it is a part and parcel of the same topics that you've been doing right from first year. So just do it in the right way so that once you get closer and closer to your entrance exams, you can add in the extra things like the Q banks, the GTs, in order to shape you and equip you towards uh, giving that exam a good shot. I think so. You, you beautifully summarized it and I completely echo your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much for taking out time and talking to us. Uh, um, heartiest congratulations once again from the entire Marrow team. Please enjoy yourself you so before much, your residency starts. Thank you, sir. Thank you.